Anyway, it's been a wonderful Mardi Gras thus far. The Nimmin Mardi Gras has been running now for 21 years. This is the 20th anniversary. Uh, it was initiated originally as a protest against a single arrest. And the townspeople in Nimbin rose up um, to protest the, the unjust cannabis laws in Australia and marched on the police station to demand that an individual who'd done nothing ethically wrong should be released. Now we come 21 years later, um, the Mardi Gras has become the focus of cannabis law reform in Australia. Why the hell would you dress in green when you can go in red? Be seen. <laughs> it's been a long developing child cannabis law reform in this country, from the first heady days where it was informal protest, till now where the, the Mardi Gras is a, a very large event encompassing days and many, many thousands of dollars expenditure and hundreds of hours investment. It's part of the original Aquarius site, which is interesting. So it's been a few months clearing it, getting, we've got this hash bowl, should be a mole bowl stage, which the sound has been beautiful on, but quite steep. Peace and love. That's the truth. Well, it's going very well, thank you, except I, I dare not smoke any pot because there's so many police around. It's the first time I've ever been in Nimbin in 40 years and not been stoned. Oh, so far so good. It's um, pretty peaceful. We haven't had much trouble at all. Well, it's still illegal and if it's um, out in the open where we see it, they're going to get um, dealt with under the law. The policeman just said, what's that? And he said, whatever, and the police took his joint. We had those few years of the riot squad. It's changed. Public opinion's changed. Their policing's changed. They're way smarter. They're not doing the bullying they did do. You know, yesterday this, we do this 4.20, the whole street was blocked for a mass smoke in and we're waiting for the combi convoy, you know, and it didn't come and the two senior cops are trapped by all these ganja fairies dancing in front of them. They were really cool and patient. I was impressed. Well, the issue of whether it's illegal or not is really not why we're here. It's to make sure everyone's safe and has a good time because there's a fringe element that's probably not that interested in the issue itself, just here to have a good time at other people's expense. Here we have the, the hypocrisy of, of modern Western medicine allied with our police and legislature. Um, we have decreed that cannabis is a dangerous narcotic with no medicinal purposes, but belying this fact is that epilepsy is cured, in many cases absolutely cured, um, by the utility of cannabis, as are a great many other diseases. I mean, we're not a healthier population. We're an over-medicalised over population whose dependency on medicine has gone from $10 billion in 1985 to $50 billion now. So I don't think the TGA or any of the food regulatory authorities have done a very good job. I'm telling you right now, I would much prefer to have cannabis as a first-line um, medication than all these chemicals that they're trying to solve. Tony Bauer's been manufacturing a tincture according to the, the old recipes and supplying it to people who have epilepsy, um, people who have uh, Crohn's disease, um, people who are suffering from terminal cancers. This is the 2013 Hamble Living Spontro and Chuck. Free Tony! Free Tony! Free Tony! Free Tony! Medical marijuana! Well, Tony's arrest clarifies. Um, a great many of the issues that are current right now in uh, cannabis law reform. The New South Wales Legislative Chamber, the Upper House in New South Wales, is currently considering a, a report into medicinal cannabis. A lot of people come to Nimbin and they say, oh, it's full of, you know, all you see is people selling drugs. But then if you sit here, you'll see old people coming in trying to get their cancer medication. They're not shifty dudes coming to town to score pot and drugs. Yeah, they're like sick people coming in to get medicine. You know? Finalist in this year's Women's Bong Chuck. Don't forget the yell. Put everything into it. Be the bong, Elizabeth. Be the bong. Whoa, yes! Ooh, smashed into an unconscious person. He's going to wake up with a wet bum.
Yes, I think that's fair, Manny. There we go. Sky High Mother was the strange codified yell. Yeah. Three mile away. Ooh, that's a good throw. Whoa, that's yes. a great throw. Whoa. Hannah threw that bong a distance of 32.6 metres. Ladies and gentlemen, sporting champions. We've had a, a intolerance to alcohol, um, which is a policy of the event. All bottle shops in the village close at 8pm of an evening. The police uh, confiscate and pour out any opened alcohol um, encountered. Um, they police the parks regularly um, and they have full support of the, the event organisers. We are for cannabis law reform. We are not a bunch of groggies brawling in a park. The Gunja Fairies attacked the Hare Krishnas. <laughs> What has Mardi Gras done for Nimbin is a tricky question for me because, you know, I get, you have to blame a bit for giving it the cannabis capital name. But for me, you know, every little village has its festival. We have a valid protest. That, that's sort of how I justify it to myself. Nowhere is cannabis use more open. Nowhere do more kids go in and out of jail. Nowhere more pot smokers with permanent criminal records. So we, the rage is here really intensely against you know, the cannabis laws. So, uh, you know, we could be Bangalore and have a flower festival, but we got to protest. And I, you know, I feel like it's a good, it's meaningful. Thank you.